Hello friends, welcome back to the Selenium tutorial. In the previous session, we learned how to identify elements with the help of XPath. In this session, we would be learning something more about XPath. We would see what is a relative XPath and how does it differ from the, an absolute XPath. So for that, we need the Firebug. I'm assuming that you have Firebug and Firepath installed in your systems. So I would now click this bug icon on the top right hand corner of the Firefox browser and activate the firebug. The firebug will launch in a few seconds. As you can see, it has actually launched. Now, in previous example, we had fetched the XPath using this HTML tab. We clicked this arrow icon, moved my mouse to this email field. The email field got highlighted below, you could see over here. And then what we did was right clicked and did a copy XPath. Now, if you have firepath installed, we, you need not do that. There is an alternate way how to fetch the fire path. Oh, sorry, how to fetch the X path, which is as follows. Like you have to go to this fire path tab, repeat the same procedure. Click this arrow icon, hover your mouse to the field email and here you get something. This is also the X path. Now this what you see is a relative X path. It is not an absolute X path. You could I would show you like what is the absolute X path and how does it differ from the relative X path. So what we'll do is we'll just copy this thing in a notepad file. So I'm copying it and I'm pasting it over here. So in order to get a relative X path, one setting you should keep in your mind. If you come to this fire path on the right hand side, there is a small arrow. If you click over there, if this second option generate absolute X path is unselected, then by default, the fire bug would give this relative X path, which we just copied. So if I need to view the absolute X path, this option should be selected. So what will happen if I select this option? Now, in, now I'm selecting, you could see the stick mark has appeared over here. Now what I'll do is just restart this fire bug. So fire bug has uh, now I have restarted the fire bug and if I see fire path uh, again here this time this option is selected. Now what will happen when I do this repeat the same step I would uh, click this arrow button and now navigate to the email id field. This time, if you would see, the X path is not the small X path. It is a le lengthy X path. So this is actually the absolute X path. The first thing which we had copied, this is the relative X path. You could see it is smaller and this is the absolute X path. Now how these two differ, like I could use either of these in my script, both would work. But what is the difference? Basically, the absolute X path. This is the absolute X path. The absolute X path gives the location of the element under test right from the root of the HTML page. You could see HTML body, some divisions, and finally the input field. Whereas the relative X path, this is the relative X path. The relative X path does not consider from the root of the HTML source page. Like it finds the closest ID field and from that field it picks up the value of the ID. So you could see like both these things, the absolute X path and little X path belong to the email ID field, but this is very lengthy, the absolute X path and this is very short. Now there is an advantage of a relative X path in case Tomorrow my developer some makes some changes about this email ID field. Like he makes some changes in this field, sign into continue to Gmail. Then what will happen is if we have already stored the absolute X path, there are chances that there could be some changes here. Like another division could have added. The developer may have added another division. But since we are using the X path which we had we had fetched previously. We have not checked like what changes have been made. 
so this x path would fail because the new division is not available over here and the advantage of this later x path is it won't consider all these fields like whatever is above this email field it won't consider it would directly consider the fields which are after this email so this would work even if there are some changes made above the email field so relative expats are more reliable than absolute absolute expats so it's a good practice to always use relative expat so we have fetched the relative expat of email id field now we would fetch the relative expat of password field so once again what i will do is i would deselect this option the option is deselected i would restart firebug I would check now this time the generate absolute xpath option is deselected now I click on this arrow icon and hover my mouse to the password field and if you could see it has given me a small xpath which is actually the relative xpath of the password field I would store it in the notepad file and finally we if you want to click the sign in button I would fetch the relative xpath of the sign in button. So everything is ready with me now. So we'll go to Eclipse and write the code. The code would be very simple. It would be exactly the same which we had done in the previous example. The steps are the same. Go to source folder, right click, new class. I would name the class as relative xpath. I would just name as relative xp this option public static void main string ask click on finish button the class would get loaded so the class has loaded we will start coding from the main function once again I would delete this unwanted comment the first step as we all know we have to create object of the web driver class web driver dr this time i am naming the, uh, my object as dr is equal to new we would be using firefox browser so firefox driver you would see these errors you must be very familiar with these by now just hover the mouse over there do an import of the web driver library i am assuming you have configured your java project with the web driver jar files if not please do so else these options would not come so now I'm correcting this error which is there on the Firefox driver. I import the Firefox driver. The error has vanished. Next step is we would be using the driver object dr.get and navigating to gmail.com. Now we would be entering the username and password in those fields. So dr dot find element by you are using the x path so by dot x path and here you would provide the x path expression remember the x path expression would be the relative x path we have already stored the relative x path in the notepad file i would just pick it up from there this is the x path of the email id field i just copy it paste it now what operation we need to perform we need to pass the email id so the operation is dot send keys and the key which we are actually passing so in this case test at gmail.com now we need to pass the password so same steps driver dot find element Again, we are using xpath, so dot by xpath. Here you provide the relative xpath of the password field, which is this. The method would be the same dot send keys. I'm 
passing one, two, three. So three mask characters would appear over there. And finally, we are clicking on the sign in button. So tr dot find element by dot xpath. the relative xpath expression of the sign in field I paste it over here now this is a button so I would use the click method over here so code is ready this time I'm not using the absolute xpath we are using the relative xpath and let's see whether this piece of code would work or not to execute it click on this run button on the left hand side and let's see whether the relative experts work so you could see the browser has launched now it would navigate to gmail.com you could see it is connecting the g would load in a few seconds now it would enter the email id in the email field and password in the password field and click on the sign in button here you go email id password and the sign in button has been clicked since this is an invalid email id and password gmail is giving me some kind of a error which is fine i had just randomly entered some value the purpose of this example was to show that we uh, was the purpose like how do you use the relative x path so in the previous example we had covered the absolute x path here we have covered the relative x path so as a suggestion we should generally use the relative x path as it was demonstrated that if there are any changes made in the page there are chances that the relative x, sorry the absolute x path may have to be modified but the probability of relative x path to be modified is much lesser so i would give you that as a suggestion that to use relative x path as far as possible guys thanks for joining we'll see you